Good morning. Today I'm going to go through homeschool math gadgets. Now I warn you, this video might get kind of long, but if you're a homeschooler, and especially if you're a homeschooler to kiddos who have dyscalculia or dyslexia, hang with me and I'm going to share some of the things I have found super helpful. I'm going to try to lay them out here on the table and go through one by one. Um, I'm not going to go into depth into any one, so if there's any of them that you see that you want to learn maybe a little bit more about, maybe let me know in the comments. Um, one of the most important ones I'll probably be doing toward the end, so hang with me if you would. I'm going to turn the camera here, so hopefully you can see a little bit better. Hopefully that's not real loud as I adjust it. Sorry, I'm not very great at that. <laughs> First one, you're right on the money shot. <laughs> this one is literally the box from a shoe, the shoe box that I turned into a cash drawer. It has both real money and like the little fake, let's see if you can see, little fake plastic ones. I don't really like these little plastic ones and the reason why is, I'm going to see if I can angle that so you can see me too so you're not talking to just my hands the reason why I don't like these plastic ones is because they just don't have the right feel they're I don't know it just it's not the same I far prefer having some real coinage in here so when it comes to coins we do keep some actual real coins in here so the kids kind of know how and can feel the weight and the textures and so forth that's a little tricky when it comes to quarters because of course we have all the state quarters they're all different but they don't and that's kind of the thing is I want them to stop paying attention to just the picture on the front I want them to feel what the, a quarter feels like its size its weight and so forth um, we even took some trouble to get some halves in there I had to go to a coin store for that <laughs> But most of the cash is, well, actually all the cash is just like the kind that you either print or you buy like at a to toy store. Now you can buy a cash drawer that is, I think um, Melissa and Doug make a set that's not too bad. You might want to expand it a little bit, but it's certainly a really good place to start. I'm going to be linking to things below that can be found on Amazon, and I'll try to link um, to the Melissa and Doug version that I know is one of the nicer versions I've seen out there of a cash store. But a cash store is, I think, very, very important so they can learn to handle money. And honestly, my kids view it as a game because they like to find things around the house and start selling them to me. <laughs> But it's a, it's a really good way to get them intro into handling money. And if you have a really young one, you can just start by using whole dollars, you know, whatever you want to do there. But this one is, I think, a very important one to have. And literally, foam board in a uh, shoebox lid works if you don't have one. I initially tried to DIY a lot of stuff. Some things I bought, some things I DIY'd. Um, clocks. Yeah, I've got kind of a collection going here. I do have a laminator. I think a laminator is pretty important if you want to DIY very much. We have DIY'd a lot over the years, and that really just helps. Honestly, you can get one for like 20 bucks, and then the pages, you know, just depending on how many you use aren't that bad. So I think they're important. We made several clocks. This one is probably one of my favorites because it's color coded. And the, long, the hands are actually long enough so they actually point to the thing. And I like having the minutes on it. That's been very helpful in training what the clock actually stands for. Then there's others you can take like this to help learn quarter hours and so forth. This is an old version that I initially tried because I was looking for clocks that had the minutes marked. This is one that I printed and I just hand wrote in the minutes. Um, this was one from a website called Twinkle. It's like twinkl.co.uk. It was a pretty nice one because it had things color coded well too. I don't know if you can see. But I printed that, cut it out, and uh, did the thing. We've used this one probably the most over the years. But my real favorite one is this one. And it's actually geared. So when you move this hand, the other one moves. And they're in sync. And if you only got one, I think this is the most important. You can get this at a lot of places. Amazon has it, but um, 
I think I got this one from Kristen Light when we were ordering some math books already. They have it for just like two dollars or something. It's not very much. The problem is is when you order from them then you have shipping. So unless you're already ordering something else it's not super cost effective. But I think you can still get it like on Amazon by itself pretty cheap. So very very useful tool for any kiddo. Not just you know dyslexic of course. Learning to tell time is something that a lot of public schoolers don't even do from what I understand. Or at least on this type of clock they don't learn it. Let me move this off to the side. Um, this a lot of these gadgets are Montessori based. I have really developed a great love for Montessori items. I don't agree with all the Montessori philosophy, I won't lie. However, all of the math manipulatives are just outstanding for teaching concepts. This one is not true Montessori in that it was purchased from China. <laughs> it was a knockoff, if you will. It's, Montessori has an addition board and a subtraction board. This is a combined addition and subtraction board. Basically one side is one, one side is the other. And that worked better for me and it was less than the cost of one of the true Montessori item. Let me see if you can see better. You can see how everything is marked. And these right here are your little sticks that you lay out. Let me see if I can line this up here with the camera. Oh, sorry if that's crazy loud. You have, there's a blue side and a red side of these right here. And what you do is if you're wanting to add six, you lay a six down and say you want to add in four. And then you see what number they end up at. I don't know if you can see that good on the camera angle, but it shows that six and four make it all the way to the 10 mark. And this is a good tool for visual adding and subtracting, of course, addition subtraction board. But it just kind of helps the kiddo see visually, just like Matthew C blocks do if you're familiar with Matthew C. Now these can get all laid out so you have like all your red lined up in order and all your blue lined up in order. And I know Montessori has like a particular side for each one. I don't know that off the top of my head. And then there's these that are just blank and they can be used for the subtraction side to kind of show a difference. But I'm not going to go into how to use that, but let's just say this. It's a fairly useful tool. We used it a good bit with my daughter. I haven't been using it as much lately she seems to have the concept of her addition and subtraction down pretty good but it's a good one when you're trying to learn concepts <coughs> there is another tool here I'm going to go over in a second that I find way more useful than this but this is a good one to have and I think I got this one through eBay and of course it was from China and I think I only paid like $12 it wasn't very much where each addition and subtraction board is like 25 each for if you get the full Montessori version. One benefit if you do buy the full Montessori version is they are bigger. This is kind of reduced in size to what the real one is and I think that would be useful especially if you're starting addition and subtraction really early and you have a kiddo that maybe doesn't have the best coordination. Having it a little bit bigger is a good thing. Now you can also DIY this. Initially I did because you can print one laminate it and cut these pieces out perfectly fine. The reason I went ahead and bought this instead of just using the laminated one was because all the little pieces were a little harder to handle and slowed me down and I felt fumbly with them and that's the case with some of these things like the hundred board I'm about to show you that can be printed and DIY'd. Um, many of these things can be printed but sometimes having something that's a little thicker to touch and move is good. Okay, the next one I am going to show you the 100 board. This one is a very useful one. And it's basically just the little tiles that can move around. I think you can see that. And you can work with a child a little bit at a time or a lot at a time when they're still doing their elementary learning one through a hundred you can have them have the tiles just pull out say one through ten and have them put them in order um, you can just do one through twenty or whatever you think they're capable of but this is super helpful in them understanding and seeing number patterns um, a hundred board or a hundred chart like I have a hundred chart here that I created 
that is very useful. The patterns that you can see, you can use them for skip counting, so many things. And I like having something like this because you can use dry erase right on top of it. I've got a plain one that we use more than this rainbow one. Um, she tended to get distracted by all the color. But the bands of color can be useful to you know, show, hey, this is the 10s, this is the 20s, and you know, so on. But the same here. And these usually come with a chart that kind of fit this too. So you can start with a chart as a control and have the tiles laid down on top of it. So like as a child's counting out loud, one, two, laying them down. So there's lots of games and you can find ideas online for many ways to use this. This one also is a knockoff of the Real Montessori. The Real Montessori comes with a, uh, a holder for all your tiles and it is a little bit bigger as well. But this is one that I had, I did buy this off of Amazon and I think it was $10. Very, very worth it. Again, you could DIY and print and laminate one, but all those little pieces are so hard to pick up if it's just flat laminate. So I totally recommend in that, investing in that. It's a good one. We've used it a good bit. And sometimes I'll have my kiddos work together to put all the numbers in order and it becomes a puzzle and a uh, lesson in cooperation, <laughs> which doesn't always go great. This is one I bought that I really don't use a whole lot that can be very useful. I bought it because I wanted to help my kid understand subitizing. I know a fancy word, but kind of seeing what things look like when they're added together because I thought maybe the color differentiation would help there. I think I paid like four bucks on Amazon for it. And some people use these a ton. There's a particular curriculum, I think, I think it's called Right Start that uses this. But it's a handy little thing to have sometimes, so admittedly, I don't use it as much as other people do. I do use this a lot for my daughter who is still doing her addition and subtraction. This is a 20 frame. I found this on Etsy. You can look it up. Um, if I think about it, I'll try to link that one into the homeschool links that I usually have. But it comes with these little wooden balls, and you have to wait on this thing to be custom made. It's, it took me, I don't know, a month and a half to get it from the time I ordered, but that happens when you're dealing with custom stuff. But I also took it and I have penciled in very lightly each number so she can kind of see it as a glance. Right now I only have the 1 through 10 on there because I want her to see and, you know, at a glance what it is and I also drew a line down the middle so she can kind of see where the half is and so forth as she's counting and we use this for addition and subtraction quite a lot but of course you can use it for a lot of different things very useful I think I paid I think it was twenty dollars for this and of course being custom made that was why maybe you can find one cheaper but very useful gadget for seeing and counting your addition and subtraction knowing if you put um, seven and two together that it's going to reach up to here. So, <coughs> excuse me. There's just something about seeing, feeling, and getting a visual on it. Again, like Matthew C. Blocks do, but I think this is more versatile. And this is a, this is one I definitely do not regret buying at all. This is something I bought about last Christmas time or so. It is Montessori. I did buy it from a Montessori site. It, I think I got it from Alice in Montessori. It is a, I think they call it a square root board, and I think it's the larger version of it. Or, how do they phrase it? They may phrase it as a smaller version. Anyway, they have two versions. One has way more holes and pegs in it. It's like a peg board and I have that one too for later because I got that for doing square roots actually for this one while well, it's called the square root board or something like that I didn't buy it for that I bought it more to do the addition or I'm sorry the multiplication and division boards Montessori has multiplication and division boards which are fantastic but I didn't want to have to buy each board and then these kinds of boards too where this can be used for square root square roots and binomials all kinds of things there's these little balls and if i color coordinate to the montessori stuff i can just simply use the red for 
the multiplication like Montessori does with the multiplication board and use it the same way and then I can always add in other little pieces as I need to um, there's a little piece a little disc that would be on the Montessori board that just kind of floats on top to let you know how much you multiply out by say you're multiplying by five five you would put a little red disc here and then fill in one two three four five on your beads and then fill in the rest with the rest of your beads and you've demonstrated multiplication and division basically would be with the green beads and you just do your concepts by laying it out visually you know with the division say you want you know 20 beads divided by five you would count out 20 beads and then five rows of them and then see how that works out to be it's actually a concept that I found I really didn't have to do too much like when I was showing my son division I only had to demonstrate it like once and he had it down completely um, it's just not something we had to do a lot there is also what they call long division board and it is the racks and tubes as Montessori called it and I DIY that as well let me pause the video here and I'll go get alright got the racks and tubes out you all probably gonna laugh at me on this one okay initially like a lot of things I started printing the multiplication and division boards from websites that would allow somehow a baseball card got in there and a bracelet see we're messy I'm not all organized <laughs> there's what the division board looks like on the free printable and multiplication but there's also the four board set like for racks and tubes as Montessori calls it where you do long division and I didn't want to uh, fuss with buying that because that is a very very expensive work um, I think it's like hundred and twenty dollars or something so what I did I bought this board of course which I can use for a multiplication board and a division board to teach that concept but if I want to do the long division I bought a basic set of test tubes off of eBay I'm sorry I got them off of Amazon I think anyway just empty test tubes and you have to get the right size and I will link to these but you gotta get the right size and what I did is because I didn't have the right beads while well, these beads came with this board there was nowhere near enough of them to do this I could use these for basic addition or multiplication and division but I can't use them for the full racks and tube thing so what I use is pony beads you know like the kind for your hair just these little beads with the holes in them and they fit perfectly in these test tubes that I bought and you can see visually as you go through and do your little divisions that visually that there's 10 in each tube anyway I'm not going to go into how to use this you're probably like what on earth is all this for just search for the Montessori racks and tube or long division boards and you will see all about it and it was a brilliant way to demonstrate long division I'm going to put all of these in here having some Montessori's real big on extra trays literally I'm using like a pan from the dollar store <laughs> kind of funny the things you do now actually I need to put it over here the you don't have to have all this stuff I grant you I know I've got a lot going on here so if you're new to homeschooling don't feel intimidated like you have to do all this right away no you don't this is several years of me doing this stuff and trying to DIY it the racks and tube thing I think I probably put 15 20 dollars into that maybe at most you know when it's normally well over a hundred I don't think that's bad but some of these things, yeah, you'll put a little money into DIYing, but it's way worth it. And then other things like this, I couldn't DIY this board very well. It, I don't have that kind of equipment here, so I just bought that. But it wasn't too bad. Um, let me think here, what next? This is something I recently purchased. I'm going to show you these. Got these off of Amazon. They're three corner edition, subtraction cards and I like these though I'm not used them much you can basically just cover a corner and see how one number 
relates to the other in an equation and you can have the child figure out what the missing one is and I got these to work with my daughter I thought that was a pretty cool concept not at all Montessori or anything like that but I think super important and helpful for working with addition subtraction which she is so far she's pretty good at it um, she's got it nearly down but you know stuff like this helps trying to get more instant recognition um, <coughs> excuse me I think the next thing I'm going to show you this little gadget I made many years ago it was from a printable online I would link to it but I don't remember where I got it I'm sorry it's been so long since I made it but you can look up place value slider I think I had found it like off of Pinterest and LinkedIn printed and I laminated it I can give you a tip when you laminate leave a little extra on the ends because I had to redo that so that when you're doing this one it doesn't fall out so easily but I'm sure you can see how it works the camera might be reversing it I don't know if you can see everything might be backwards but in general this thing is so helpful when you're learning place value and you see the pattern of numbers my dad when he was still alive and helping with the children one day he said you could teach an armadillo with that thing <laughs> and I think he's right it really is helpful in you know if you've got a laminator how easy and frankly you could do it without a laminator if you just have a printer printer and you could just print it on some heavier cardstock that would probably be fine as long as you're gentle with it but it's super useful and you can this I remember the site had a version where you could just do hundreds or you could do other way you know, to thousands place very very helpful and I know you've used this a ton a ton the next thing I want to go over with here is another little Montessori by in this one I specific specifically did it because of the dyslexia issues that my daughter was having I didn't have it for when I was teaching my son but it's these little red numerals they call them numerals they're wooden and they're rather large the reason I got them is I wanted something that had a front and a back something they could pick up touch move around not just a flat two-dimensional I wanted a three-dimensional which is what these are and Montessori uses them just for the numeral lesson where you lay out the numbers in order and then you lay out little discs or what have you to learn counting you know one disc for number one and you know five discs for number five and so on and what's useful for that are those little glass um, pebble things like you get at the Dollar Tree we use those for that lesson but I just mostly wanted these just for the fact of being able to touch it turn it feel it and I did that because of the dyslexia because there's so much trouble with dyslexics in learning the difference between six and nine especially but also number eight gets in there um, and the six is made very curved whereas the nine is more straight and you can see how that goes and that's just super super useful um, well, the eight kind of has a little bit of a slant to it which my son told me one of the reasons why six eight and nine get confused is if you put the six and nine on top of each other it makes an eight and I was like well I'll be never would have thought that's why that he struggled to understand the difference between them but they did my daughter struggled with the same thing but having those helped just for my mind just for simple number recognition because it was just really hard to get those in the brain and that was useful I think it would be useful to have those with a texture on them too so like if you could spray paint them with like a sandpaper because like sandpaper numerals is a big thing I don't have any here right now but um, that being able to touch and feel the texture is good but if you took that and amped it up with some kind of a texture paint that would be even better I haven't had these that long I got these um, the same time I bought that other board it was about Christmas time last year but they're useful to have and those are only like three dollars for a set and I got a couple sets of them so there's a little more than average in there but I wanted to be able to use them for place value lessons which is the next big thing I'm going to show you in this next thing is the thing has been the most helpful hands down super important and it is the Montessori beads in the place value lessons 
they, they kind of use it all here together. First, Montessori has lessons like the tens and the teens lessons, and these for place value. All of those lessons combined with these beads, you can kind of do as once you find a printable for these. All you're doing is each one is color coded. You want to form 1,000, your 100. Let me get the other side here. I think you probably get the idea. Oh, okay, here it is. 20, 2. So you can see and form your number and see what each value really is and then expand it out for that expanding place value that you know you need to t teach for a lot of curriculum nowadays. Seeing it like that is very helpful, but what we also do is we use these beads. And now, you can buy these beads, and I'm gonna link to them on Amazon, but the, what you buy is gonna be a little bit different because, oh, sorry, I touched the mic again. I'm really bad about doing that, sorry guys. I need the lapel mic to make my voice louder, but then I go and you know, move my shirt and it blows the mic out. I hope I didn't do it. Anyway, my beads are DIY. I did them myself. And it was many, many, many hours. <laughs> now, I don't regret doing it. I actually enjoyed doing it. I found it fun. I did it through the winter, not this last winter, but winter before last. And it has paid dividends and uh, how much we've used it. What you have is basically your red beads are your one like those are your three and so on green is two and then the child learns the color for the right bead just like with those Matthew C blocks again you have color coded for each number and you can lay them out and use them and then there's also the Montessori golden beads that I DIY'd which the golden beads are used when you're using place value lessons that way all the beads are the same color and you have your individual ones and then your tens. And what we do, I'm probably gonna have to move the camera for this here a little bit. What we do is we use a mat. And you can buy a mat, or you can kind of do what I'm doing. I just, I made this in paint <laughs> on the computer. You can do where you have the smaller version Sorry, the smaller version with the ones, tens, and hundreds, and they're color coded by the place. Or you can do ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. It probably looks a little confusing and overwhelming at that fast, but let's do this way. So, what I'll do is I'll have a lesson like this, and I'll say, build the number, whatever. And I'm just going to build an example here. And then We'll have the child build it, and then you can see these color coat out to the individual place, and then on top of the mat to reinforce what we're doing here, say we would lay three. I don't have all these out right now. These are the thousands that we use. It's a little cardboard printable. You can buy wooden versions of the thousand cubes. You can make bead ones, which is nice. That represents a thousand. And you can lay them out. And I don't have a third one out right now. They're over on my shelf. So pretend there's three here. And then you can lay, um, there's my hundred. Here's my hundred square. You lay that there. So there's two of these for the tens. And then there's two of the ones. And what an amazing lesson in place value this becomes. I have drilled my daughter in this and she's getting better and better with place value, but I think the demonstration of this is just amazing. I wish I had had that when I had my math classes as a kid. Oop, I think I was touching the mic again, sorry. All in all, this has been the most valuable time I've ever spent DIYing a math thing. These beads here, are definitely what you would try to DIY or buy first. Now, when I'm linking, I think I link to like the checkerboard beads, which is a similar basic set 
I have way more in here than you would get when you buy and it's because of you know when you DIY something you can make a lot more because I wanted a lot extra um, but you can buy that and then with Montessori like to get the hundred squares and the thousands you have to buy all of that individually now I won't lie this thing took a long time to make and I wanted at least one so they could see and feel what a thousand felt like and the same with hundred now I made I think ten or so of the hundred squares but I only did one of the thousand cube and then I explained this is going to represent a thousand cube so I did the printable and you can buy wooden blocks for the Montessori you can buy beaded ones there's all sorts of options you can do for your thousand cubes so you can have multiples and you can get a big old stack of them what I've been tempted to do is make a cloth mat of the place value mat instead of this printed one so it can be much bigger and then you can lay out all your cubes on it and show what your numbers represent but this thing here with all of these little pieces um, they make wooden ones for the Montessori of these number cards probably a good investment I do think these laminated work just fine but the thing that I would never in a million go back on are these beads because these beads can demonstrate so many math concepts you can do bead chains I think I started a bead chain in there to skip count on the chains but I decided I'm just going to yeah, right there where I started to do a bead chain you see just decided to lay out two by two by two by two for skip counting I just I'm not gonna make the chain on top of it there's so many things you can do you can demonstrate the multiplication and division and everything with these now I also made for later we've not used these much yet <laughs> I know it's a lot it's like all shiny and glittery um, for doing cubes cube roots and all that those are like this one is the what is it nines so you would have nine times nine times nine sorry <laughs> and each color look like those are your eights and so on every color has a, cu a cube the the one that's like the most floppy is the two because it only these are held together by um, plastic mesh and that one is a little bit floppier because there's not as many beads to stabilize it like where this this one here is very solid it's a little bit but and there is a way to make these without plastic mesh there's someone selling on Etsy little metal pieces that you can put in there I don't know if you can see the mesh in there but there's a person on Etsy selling metal mesh kind of things that you can build these on had I known that I would have bought that because if there's one thing I dislike about my homemade is the mesh because it causes a slight misalignment when you get that big it didn't really with this this came out really pretty even I don't know if you can tell the difference on the camera but there's a big difference and my OCD side likes how even some of those are it just got to be when you did that many it got a little lumpy but all in all these things have been very fascinated to fascinating to my kids even my older child he thought that was pretty cool but the concepts you can demonstrate are just brilliant the the Montessori stuff it can be phenomenally expensive like Montessori schools and all that are just way out there beyond my comprehension and how expensive they are but don't discount it because you can DIY so much Montessori now I did spend a lot for the beads um, I'll we'll put the camera back on me now I think I've gone through most and I'm going to right now I spent a lot for the beads DIYing it um, I think in the neighborhood when I bought them I spent about 70 80 it was a lot in the wire one that much but to buy as many beads as I have made is hundreds and hundreds of dollars with Montessori stuff now you can buy a small set to work with and start with and you can do a ton with that small set and you can spend like 30 bucks on that set very very worth it but I wanted to be able to expand and do there's a bird on the window 
I wanted to be able to expand and do a lot with because there's algebraic things I wanted the full decanomial as they call it so you can expand and show full algebraic equations with these beads it is amazing the things that you can demonstrate and demonstrate with the concrete examples of what these math concepts and what these equations are and that's why I wanted the full Monty with the beads and the only way I was going to do that was if I DIY'd them there was no way I was spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on them but I don't regret DIYing them I really enjoyed it I just set up an evening it we did it through the winter and through Christmas time and just my husband and I were watching TV and watching a few series and I'd just sit and work on beads I developed a callus on my hands for a while from doing beads uh, but I really enjoyed it. I kind of miss it. I've actually thought about doing some more just to sell at some point, though. You would never in a million get the time back that you spend in it <laughs> um, for the cost. I mean, I can't, I know some people sell them and I really don't know how because you, you just really wouldn't be profiting off of your time because it spends so much time. But for me as a mom, it was worth my time. Totally worth it. And I very much recommend doing something like that. Um, even if you don't like all this whole crazy Montessori stuff, none of this is required. This is just the path that we took. I got really into checking out the Montessori concepts for math manipulatives just because I found them brilliant. Um, but you, there's so many things you can do. Just a basic base 10 block set you can do a ton of stuff with and you can buy those on Amazon's cheap and stuff too. Um, I don't know of any stores you can buy them in personally unless you just happen to be one of those blessed people that have like a educational supply store nearby. When we lived back in Columbus we had one but even then I think Amazon was usually cheaper. So these are just a few of the things I have. I know my video is getting crazy long. If there's any one thing that you want to see a concept, concept demonstrated better let me know if you want to learn how to make the Montessori beads. There's other videos on that, but I can try to show you what I did. That one would take me some time to get together on that though. But this is just math. And this is not all of the math stuff that I have DIY'd or tools that I've made. It's just probably the nicer things <laughs> that I thought might be interesting to you guys. The thing I want to encourage is don't be intimidated. This is years of stuff that I have compiled together trying to teach my kids concept because my kids are great at getting concept. If I show them in a hands-on way, they will grab a concept like that. And once they have the concept, that's what's important. So all this stuff to me is worth it if they get their concepts in and keep them in, and they seem to. But just to explain something, they'll look at me like the deer in the headlights, like, what are you talking about, mom? <laughs> but when I get this stuff out, it clicks and that is so worth the click so if you're new to this and you're struggling you got a kiddo that's having a hard time getting the math concepts down consider the math manipulatives as they call it makes a huge huge difference and just take one thing at a time say you're working on money well work on making your money tray say addition and subtraction work on the thing that you think whether it's getting you some beads like this or the addition and subtraction board or even just some blocks or some legos you can do a lot with simple legos you know find something to work with hands-on that your kiddo can get some visual and kinesthetic as they say um, ways to help really sear into the brain there's so many things you can do and for, there's a lot of kiddos that just don't learn with basic flashcards now they have their place like I have some of the triangle ones I've tried the regular ones but most of that stuff just doesn't stick to the memory like velcro and you need that velcro this is your velcro so this is my recommendation I hope this video has been helpful again I probably have more and this is just the topic of math there's um, other stuff like that we'll use for reading and things like that math is probably the area that I have put the most into for the gadgets not all of my um, stuff is gadget based now there's some manipulatives I use for reading and spelling but this is the area where there's the most of them I have some history and science things too but I encourage you to take one thing at a time and if your kid is struggling and they can't understand a concept then get some like fractions you know that I can't understand fractions 
we get some fraction manipulatives. We've got some of those in the other room. They're, again, like Amazon things. But little things that you can touch and feel make the concepts click like that. And then usually you can get years of use out of them. You can use them for your next child. And then eventually when you're done, eBay. Pop it on eBay. Even if it's homemade. When I am done with these beads, one day, and it'll be a long time because I can use them for many years of math. But when I'm done with these beads, they will go on eBay and I will sell them. And more than likely, I'll get at least the money that I put into the beads. And I probably won't get my time back, but that's okay. But one day they'll go on eBay and then I'll take that money and then I put it into more curriculum or whatever it is we need at the time. Though I suspect these will probably stay for most of our homeschool years. Whereas some of the stuff like the the money and the cash, you know, that's not um, something we'll have to work on a whole lot longer. It just depends on the item. Some will last too many years. So anyway, again, some basic intro to math manipulatives. I hope it's been helpful. Have a wonderful day, guys.